Hey everyone, it's Tracking Pat. In today's video, we're going to show how to do DXF files on the SLX control. I have done this already for the RLX control, but it is a little different and there's a lot of people who'd like to know how to do it, so we're doing it like so. I'm using my demo box, which can be an SMX or an SLX, but I'm in the SLX part of it right now. So I'm about to show you exactly everything you need to know to start from your file that you bring in as a DXF and complete it as a finished piece part in the ProtoTrack. You're gonna need a couple things. First of all, you're gonna need your program either put on a USB stick or maybe come in from the network. And you're gonna need a mouse, whether it's wireless or a wired mouse, doesn't matter, but you're gonna need those two things, the mouse so that you can select the geometry. So why don't we get started? Okay, so first of all, I want to remind you that I am using the demo box. So even though it says SMX at the top, my demo box can run the SLX as well, which is what you see on the screen. You also see that I am using the mouse so that I can click on the geometry. And that also allows me to click on the soft keys instead of using the hard keys below. So what I'm going to do first, go to program in and out. Whoops, too many clicks. I want to open a program and I am in the folder for my DXF samples and I have one right in here for a lathe sample so I'm going to open that. In the SX control it automatically opens up the electronic print file and what I'm going to do over here is you'll see that I have different layers for different parts of that file and I'm going to hide the things that I don't need. So down here where it says the border I don't need that and you'll also see the dimensions, I don't need those. And although this is kind of hard to see here because it's in yellow, you'll see it in a minute. But that's my finished geometry, so I'm going to hit continue. And in here it's asked me if I want to close any gaps that are five thousandths or less. I can change this number to a larger number or smaller, but in this case I'm going to say five thousandths is fine. Now you can see my geometry here. And what it's asking me is whether I want to set my X and Z zeros or if I want to rotate the part. What I'm going to do first is I want to rotate the part because I want to machine this half of it. And so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to select my zero setting, okay? Now the easiest way to do this is to pan it over like so, tell it that I want to take the, the closest midpoint of a line, which is C, click on the line and there's my zero. Next I'm going to push continue. And of course we all know that in a prototrack we really only program the positive half of the part. So I'm going to use the X positive button and eliminate the part I don't need. Next I'll hit continue. And in here I have the ability to add lines and add new points and hide lines. I'm mainly going to use this to hide lines like so. So each time I double click it'll take the line and trim it down to the intersection. The next thing I want to do is I want to add a line and I want to go from this point right here to that point right there so that I can machine pass that gap and come back and do this as a groove later. And of course, last but not least, if I was going to add anything else, I would add a line off of here to finish the machining. So let's say that I want to do a new point, click on this intersection, come down here a little bit and click again. Now in reality, it'll probably be easier to make this part if I hide this line as well. So I'll get rid of that. And this is going to be the part that I'm doing in my cycle. So here I'm going to push continue. I've got my programming structure here. First thing I want to do is make a cycle event. I want to start with this piece. Whoops, I got to hit, yes, I want to chain. Start with this piece right here. Click on this piece and it'll start connecting the dots. Right here, you'll notice it doesn't know which way to go. So I have to hit that little piece in between and then the rest of the way out and the very last piece. Now that I've got everything highlighted, I'm simply gonna go up here to the event button at the top. It's asking me the stock size. Let's say it's an inch and a half, like so. It knows the beginning point of zero, zero. And now I'm gonna fill in all the blanks like I normally would. So my depth of pass, let's say that it's 50 thousandths. My approach, I'm going to use the Z axis for roughing. I'm going to set this at 450 surface foot, 8 thousandths per revolution, tool number one, finish cut of 20 thousandths, put in my feeds and speeds for the finish cut as well, tool number one again. You'll notice everything over here is turned green. 
So now I simply hit the event key again. It says, what do I want to do next? And what I want to do is I want to make a groove. Okay, so you notice groove isn't here. So I'm going to hit more and my groove is actually on the second page. So I would go to my groove here and then to get this, uh, to see this better, I'm going to zoom it up a little, okay? And I'm going to click on the three pieces of the groove. So one, two, three, click at the top. It says, tell me about the groove. It's got all the major and minor diameters and Z points already in here. Simply come down here. There's no chamfer at the top. There's no chamfer at the bottom. I'm going to put in my surface footage and my thousands per rev, put in my finish cut, surface footage for the finish cut, and tool number two. Everything is green, hit the event key. You'll see that everything here is done, so now I'm just gonna go to NDXF. It says, I'm, are you sure that you wanna do that? Yes, I am. That's going to convert the program, so now it is going to be a standard program like you would have made it by hand push the look button you'll see that there's my part you see the dotted lines which depict where the outside of the material is my finished part next thing I would do is change modes go to setup mode I have to set my reference position for my tool changes that's done go to my tool setup I'm gonna to have to set up tools we're gonna to cheat on this part so I'm gonna set a new tool it's a right turn face tool I'm gonna to pretend I touched it off Give the radius, hit return, go back to tool setup, tool number two, set a new one. It's going to be my OD groove tool, which is number 10. I'm going to pretend I touch that off too. There's no radius on it. Let's say it's 030 wide, hit return. Now I can check my tool path. You'll see my completed part with all the roughing passes, everything in here looks correct. Hit the back key if I want to go to verify part. I generally have to define the stock. The actual part is probably quite a bit longer. And the Z maximum is really Z zero, right? And my diameter is good. Go to make part, verify part. You see there's my completed part. Everything looks good. Push exit. And the last thing I would have to do would be to go save my part or go to run mode and run the actual piece part. So as you can tell, using a DXF file in your lathe is going to save you a lot of time. Even though prototracks are absolutely the easiest and fastest way to program a part right at the control, if you've already got the geometry in a DXF file, you might as well use it. And as you can tell from this demonstration, it really is quick and easy. So I hope this has been beneficial for you to learn how to use this. I enjoyed teaching it to you. As always, I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, remember to keep on tracking.